Hello and welcome to another edition of Buzz Boxing Predictions. Yes, there are some good fights, really interesting for, for next weekend. Well, let's take a look at the. Uh, yeah. The most interesting ones, well, you know, uh, of course, Alexander Poetkin versus David Price. Yeah, <clears throat> hmm. I, uh, I guess this is an interesting fight because of uh, Price being so much tall, taller, and you know. Uh, Povetkin being a, a different fighter, you know, since the being scandal has been uh, you know, discovered, he no longer wastes everyone like he did until 2017. So, what the big problem with David Price, of course, is uh, his, uh, his lack of chin, as well as, you might say, lack of stamina, because he could have beaten the hammer had he had both of these things, of course, he would have won, surely. That's sad, because he's got everything else, you know, to make it big, uh, the big punch, you know, he... He is quite well coordinated for such a tall man, you know, and he's good at, you know, putting his punches together and all that stuff. So, yeah, it's a damn shame, uh, but I don't think he can beat Povet King either, even though this is in his, uh, let's say, his home ground in Cardiff, yeah, Price has already been stopped four times, first twice by Tony Thompson and then by Erkan Tepper, who was later, uh, that fight was quite disgraceful, Tepper was on, on the juice, you know, on the, but still the German Commission didn't want to, to declare that a, a no contest as they should have. So, yeah, then he had a couple easy victories and then he lost to Hammer after first knocking him down in the fifth round. And for that king, he won, he won, as I said, his last two victories on points. Even though he won them clear, clearly against Hammer and Andre Rudenko, so he is the favorite here, clearly. I mean, uh, and he hasn't been stopped, you know, and he, he that Vladimir Klitschko could uh, <laughs> dish out and still didn't, you know, didn't get stopped. That was quite amazing, you know. So, uh, yeah, Povetkin, I think, should be able to stop also Price, especially since, as I said, Price, uh, he has a habit to, to gas after the sixth round, and he hasn't really had many fights that went past the sixth round. It was, I think, only the hammer fight. Yeah. And and all, one more, a much ear, earlier fight where he stopped this guy Sukaterin seven. So if, of course, <laughs> if it goes past six, um, no, it won't go much further, I think. So I think Povetkin will win by a stoppage in the seventh or eighth or maybe sixth round even. Yeah, I said enough about that fight.
and uh, then uh, yeah we have uh, Ryan Burnett who is fighting he's the he was the the unified anti-weight champion but he now only has the WBA super super and he's fighting a guy that I have come across for before, Jon Freyes Parejo from Venezuela. He's a, I think, rather, a rather good quality fighter. He's been stopped by Hugo Ruiz in 2012, but uh, yeah, he had a close fight against Jean Jacquiano also in 2015. And after that, he beat, uh, he didn't lose anymore. But I think Burnett is the favorite here. He's, uh, he is the better boxer, I think. And uh, he, even though he's not a puncher, he's a boxer, yeah. So, simply put, he, he should win this on a decision. Unless something uh, <laughs> unexpected should occur. So Ryan Burnett wins, I think, on points. Yes, let's see what else we have. Uh, yes. Yeah. Even Butler, Jamie Herrera, Thomas, <laughs> it's just, this is actually, yeah, the main thing, oh yeah, of course, Anthony Crawl is also making his comeback against, versus Edson Ramirez, I don't know this guy really, <laughs> so I'm not going to say anything. Well, it's not a comeback, it's his first fight of this year, so, yeah, but I think perhaps it's best to just go over to the main fight, because I have a few things to say, you know, about that one, so, uh, yeah, and it's Anthony Joshua versus Joseph Parker, the big fight, yeah, this of this month. Yeah, <laughs> where to begin? Well, Joshua, you know, everybody favors, he's the heavy favorite, I guess, even though I don't think he is as heavy as some, as many people think he is, you know, that this is a given thing. That he will win, you know, <laughs> because Joseph Parker is also unbeaten. He may not have the same kind of, you know, uh, destructive power as Joshua. He he's more like a really strong guy who who can can knock you out, but he can also, you know go the, the distance and just, you know, out-hustle you, so, uh, you know, he's, uh, of course, he's the underdog here, but he uh, is the first Samoan world boxing champion, actually, so that gives him an extra motivation, you know, here, and, uh, He's very religious, that also can help him, you know, lift his spirit, keep his spirits up and all that, give him some extra motivation. And uh, he's six foot four, and Joshua is six foot six, as you, most of you know. So, you know. That's a difference, but it's not, it's not a huge difference, because Takam, he is actually 6'2", I believe, 
and he still fought a good fight, you know. He made it tough for Joshua actually, and uh, perhaps that fight could have lasted even longer uh, had it been allowed to. So it's a sign that you know Joshua he does w well against guys that are about his size, you know, and then just come out, you know, and and slug it out. But I think Parker will be smarter than that, you know. He has proven when he beat Andy Ruiz Jr., he proved that he can be smart, you know, also. So, uh, I don't think this will be so easy for Joshua, you know. Uh, but, of course, he's the favorite to win, and uh, it will be hard for Parker to win this one, of course. Uh, yeah, Joshua has had, let's see, has had, uh, before the Takam fight, it was, uh, where is he, come on, yes. yeah, Vladimir Klitschko, yeah, so both fights actually went quite long, you know. 11 and 10 rounds, and before that, he destroyed Eric Molina. Molina is he's very, very average fighter. He always got his size and the punch, that's all. He's crap, actually. <laughs> I hate when people take him seriously, when someone counts, counts him as a, you know, a, a good, good win on Joshua's resume. I don't. I don't buy into that. He been so good that he wouldn't surely wouldn't have just lasted three rounds. He's like Charles Martin <laughs> and Dominic Brazil. He lasted seven rounds, but he was also kind of slow and you know too big. And after that, he's looked improved. And Dillian White, who on Saturday one. So those are his victims. And if we look at Joseph Park record and uh, he's uh, he's knocked out Alexander in training, but he beat Carlos Takan also but by decision. So uh, you know he's no joke of course the 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 only problem is that he does face face a, a height and reach disadvantage you know his reach is only 76 inches while Joshua's is uh, 82 that's gonna be tough you know to stay away from Joshua's punches which are rather devastating you know so uh, what else can I say? This I expect this also to last uh, quite long, you know, at least eight rounds, I I believe, if not ten, ten and eleven. I'm not sure, but I think even perhaps Parker is capable of lasting the distance, becoming the first one actually, because he has been, you know, he's been in there against some. Really, even bigger guys than Joshua, like Soyan, Romanian, he's seven, set, six foot seven and a half. And Fury, Fury is as big as Joshua, even though he's not as good, of course. But both guys fought dirty, you know, and but they couldn't throw Parker of his game. So, you know. Joshua will have to you know, have the right strategy in order to to stop him. So yeah, we'll see. Yeah, Parker has also had a few more fights. As much as that's that counts. Yeah. So as I said. 
I I think either、uh, Joshua wins by a late stoppage on you know after round eight, I think so, and or it goes to the scorecards and he wins. Most likely there also. So that's it. Okay, yeah. Thanks for watching and see you around. Bye bye.